Um, so if you are somewhere in your like 20s and 30s and you're just constantly on your phone, that's, they're, they're, you're probably a millennial. But um, And it's funny too because I think that what I want to convince you guys of by the end of this is that I think a lot of people see this and it frustrates them and they think that this generation is just doing a lot of weird things and not appreciating what's going on. Um, and whether or not that's actually true, it doesn't actually matter for us because in this industry, it is incredibly, incredibly useful for us. The fact that we use our cell phones, the fact that the way that we consume is, could not be more perfect for uh, the beverage industry. The other thing that I wanted to hit on is that uh, as of right now, they make up 25% of our current population um, and obviously a large majority of the wine purchasing market. I was actually just yesterday listening to uh, a Guildsome podcast from the 2017 review, year in review, um, and what they said was millennials right now make up 32% of the wine buying population um, and we're actually 42% of the uh, profit. So something that we'll touch on a bit more as well. Um, slight plug here, so I am not a graphic designer, but just so you guys know, like I make all of these things myself and uh, I use Canva. So if you guys don't use Canva, I just wanted to make like a slight plug there because it is amazing. You are basically able to make whatever types of designs you want and it's super easy to use. So if you are trying to figure out what your digital marketing strategy is and what you need to be doing, Canva is like an amazing tool. It's like 12 bucks a month. So if you're not using it, you and your producer should be using it. All right, so cases consumed in 2015. Obviously, this data is slightly outdated. That's why I just gave you uh, that stat from Jeff Kruth. Um, but essentially, is it, like, is it news to anyone, or does everyone kind of already know that like, millennials are actually consuming the most amount of cases of wine? I feel like you guys all probably know that, but it's important to kind of hit on this. Um, and what I would actually guess for you know, the 2017 numbers is this number's probably going up. Um, I feel like, in general, there's been a large there's generally been a focus on baby boomers. Um, poor Generation X, they just kind of like get stuck in the middle. I feel like we don't even talk about them as much. Um, but the baby boomers, and then there's the, uh, the millennials. And so now that the final millennial, I think, turned 21, like last year, we're obviously consuming the most. So the first thing that you would think when you see this is, OK, you know, yes, they're consuming the most, but they're consuming, you know, crap wine, you know, they're doing slap the bag and they're buying a lot, but they're not buying quality. Uh, so the next thing I always like to point to after that's really, really cool is that while it may be that we're also, or we're consuming the most, we're also consuming uh, premium. And that's something that I think that we don't normally spend a lot of time on. Uh, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that that you can probably think of. We care about organic, we care about the story, we care about authenticity. These are things that I'll continue to um, speak about for a while. So I just realized I don't have my timer, so I don't know how long, <laughs> I don't know how long I've been talking. Um, just let me know when I need to do questions. Um, so yeah, when you look at this, generally when you think of who's gonna buy a premium bottle of wine, you're normally thinking like an older white male that wants to have like a nice bottle of Bordeaux. Um, but it turns out when it's something over $20, we're more than three times, we're three, more than three times more likely than a baby boomer to actually buy um, a premium bottle. And that's not only interesting just because of the fact of the, uh, the amounts that we'll spend, but also what we'll spend it on. We don't, there's no true loyalty to, oh, I want this brand or this whatever. What they want is an experience. So they'll spend 20 something, you know, Dollar, they'll, they'll spend over $20 on some grape they've never heard of because what they see and what they're you know, looking for is that experience around it, more so than the actual you know, uh, label. Um, <laughs> going back to the fact that we drink a lot, we do drink a lot. There's a lot of us, we drink a lot, uh, and we're drinking about two times as much as our parents. Um, so that's just kind of a funny point to touch on here, and I think it's also an interesting one when you think about um, like buy the glass strategies or what you want to actually do with um, uh, like sales at the distribution level because I think that there's actually a lot of opportunity, again, if you continue to build on these stories and the educational aspect of this, there's a ton of opportunity to continue to introduce millennials um, into literally whatever you decide makes the sense as like a story that they would probably be interested in. So if they're going to 
consume in a restaurant, they're less likely to buy a bottle, they're more likely to buy the glass, buy, buy the glass, and um, in doing so, they may have, you know, in this case, one different glass at the, at the beginning, middle, and end, so. Um, the diversity there makes it really interesting. And we drink a lot. I don't know if that's gonna change over time, but I think it's pretty funny. Uh, this one I also find very funny. So out of the actual millennial buyers, uh, the majority of us are women, two thirds of that. Uh, and what I thought was hilarious that the Wine Market Council also prefaced with this when they put this statistic out is that not only you know, are we making up two thirds of that, we're also 22% more likely to make an impulse purchase. Um, so again, there's just good news all around for pretty much every type of producer right now and uh, distributor and importer because at the end of the day, we're buying on impulse, spending more, and uh, you know, we're walking essentially into Whole Foods or into some sort of local wine store and saying, I didn't realize I wanted a Moldovan rosé, but today that's what I think I want. Now I'm gonna buy five bottles even though I thought I only wanted one because I had a conversation and I learned that this one producer has four different varietals that I really want to try, yada, yada, yada. So um, these are things that you need to think about when you're actually creating your brand strategy or when you're working with your um, producers because on the shelf, when you walk into a store, that's your opportunity for them to be able to essentially first catch their eye um, and then something I'll touch on in a second back it up with your digital presence so that when they are actually going through the process of researching and figuring out what it is they want to buy, they're going to feel comfortable making that purchase that they definitely did not walk into the store to make. They probably were not planning on paying that much money for it, but you've now justified it and uh, introduced them to something new. So obviously, <laughs> there's no way to talk about millennials without talking about social media. Um, and this, this is a sub subject that I'll probably spend a bit of time on, um, both now and a bit later, because social media is huge in wine, and I know there was a great talk about that yesterday as well. Um, but specifically in this market, what I find to be very interesting um, is I think, these, I think these statistics are going to start changing over time. Um, the Facebook demographic now is becoming much more um, baby boomers and the millennials are shifting more into Instagram which is now also being phased out by Snapchat and all of these other um, forms of social media that are out there. So one thing I wanted to hit on here that I think is a little bit interesting is does everyone know like the difference between an Instagram post and an Instagram story? So the reason that I think this biggest change is happening is because as millennials are consuming, they want to continually be showing what is going on, but they're also afraid about security. And so they're no longer posting every single thing as it's happening uh, and leaving it there in perpetuity. What they're doing is a story is essentially you go in, I take one picture, um, and it's there for a day, and then it's gone after that. That's also how Snapchat works. Um, so there are really two different ways that you can actually target people when you do this. Um, and then it's important when you're creating this strategy to actually think about how they're consuming it. Um, so I won't get too, too deep into all of that. If you have questions about it, I'm of course happy to talk to any of you guys about that at the end. Um, but that's something that's really crucial. And the opportunity that's here that is so incredible um, that you don't get with other generations is that because as millennials consume, they want to talk about it, they want to write about it, and they want to be um, a part of that story you essentially get free advertising if you do it correctly. So for example, the reason I give this example of the stories versus regular posts is, you know, <laughs> our uh, millennial woman that comes in and makes an impulse purchase of Moldovan Rosé, we'll, we'll keep going with that example, she buys this bottle of wine, or she, no, first she goes and she looks at it. She's, you know, intrigued by whatever the label looks like. She reads on the back, Seems like there's some sort of interesting story there. She's gonna go onto her phone, she's gonna go onto Instagram or Facebook, probably Instagram, um, look up the actual producer. She's gonna realize that it's you know, a wo woman producer that has four children, yada, yada, yada. She's in love with this woman now. She buys every grape that they have available. And then when she gets home, um, you didn't just successfully make that sale, but in facilitating that story for her, what you were able to actually do was allow her to uh, feel a part of it and feel educated by what just happened 
Uh, and then by giving them that information, they're going to look super cool when they go on social media and say, check out this Moldovan rosé I just had. You know, I discovered this. We like to discover things, so you have to remember that too. That's why it's really a great opportunity for people that are for you know, different types of grapes and things that are not, not typical. Um, and in doing so, they link back to the producer, they'll link back to the importer, they'll link back to whatever they actually can, wherever they got that information from. So it's an incredible exchange and it's a win for them and it's a win for you because they're doing that marketing for you.